In this video, we'll discuss decorticate and decerebrate rigidity. Transaction of the neural axis causes release of inhibitory control of the structure below that, so they become hyperactive. So what happens in decorticate rigidity? Decorticate rigidity is present if the neural axis section is above the midbrain. A lesion between motor cortex and midbrain produces decorticate rigidity. So why rigidity is present? Because reticular activating system is intact. Decorticate spasticity is due to tonic excitation from upper areas of the reticular formation is no longer under inhibitory cortical control. Removal of the cerebral cortex or decortication have all the reflex pattern of a midbrain animal. A midbrain animal is easy to maintain because hypothalamus is still intact that control the different visceral and temperature regulating homeostatic mechanisms. So what is the most important defect in decortication animal? Most striking defect is inability to react in terms of past experience. Why the animal becomes hyperactive? in decortication because cerebral cortex controls the excitatory reticular activating system. The removal of the cerebral cortex leaves the excitatory action of the reticular activating system unopposed and that excites the gamma motor neuron that produces rigidity. So what are the features in that? Arms are flexed at wrist and elbow and fingers with supination of the arm. Legs are extended and rotated inwards. This suggests bilateral destruction, rostral to midbrain. What type of hypertonia is present in hemorrhage in the internal capsule? Hemorrhage or thrombosis in the internal capsule causes decortication where decorticate rigidity features are present in humans. Decorticate rigidity features are present on the hemiplegic side of the human and why? They are due to hemorrhage or thrombosis in the internal capsule which is the most common site of bleeding. So what are the different parts of the brain where the bleeding can occur? Most common site is internal capsule where 60% of the cases occur. In the other four parts, each has 10% cases of hemorrhage. They are cerebral cortex, pons, thalamus and cerebellum. The decerebrate rigidity. Transaction of the upper border of the pons causes muscle spasticity. Neck and limbs are extended with pronation and back arch. All four limbs are extended this suggests damage to the motor tract in the midbrain or caudal to diencephalon. A combination of arm flexion and leg extension indicates a lesion in the pons. And why is due to? It's due to diffuse facilitation of the stretch reflex, which is due to increased excitability of the motor neuron, increased rate of discharges of the gamma neurons. So, what are the brain areas that inhibit the stretch reflex? Brain areas that inhibit the stretch reflex are motor cortex, corticospinal tract, basal ganglia cerebellum and reticular inhibitory areas and what are the brain areas that, that facilitate the stretch reflex they are reticular activating or facilitatory areas and the vestibular nuclei so a neural axis section of the superior pons leaves a space unopposed action of reticular activating system and vestibular nuclei from reticular activating system and reticular inhibitory system impulses descend in the lateral funiculars of the spinal cord a reticular inhibitory system also become inactive because the two inhibitory areas that control it are also gone whereas the discharges of the reticular activating system continue so gamma discharges increase and stretch reflex becomes hyperactive cerebellar inhibitory area that is still present but removal of the cerebellum increases the rigidity in animals but in human removal of the cerebellum causes hypertonia rather than spasticity other facilitatory tract is a vestibulospinal tract and their activity is due to increased activity of alpha motor neuron. What are the effects of head and neck movements on body posturing? What happens if head is turned on one side? If the head is turned on one side, limb of that side becomes more rigid and more extended and the limbs of the other side becomes less rigid and less extended. What happens if head is flexed? Head flexion causes more flexion of the upper limb and extension of the lower limb. And what happens on head extension. Head extension is exactly opposite to that of head flexion. It causes more flexion of the lower limb and extension of the upper limb. Why there are changes in body posture due to head movement? Changes in body postures because of head movement is due to increased activity of proprioceptors in the neck.